so Karthik, you always used to say that build a startup which can be worth a book, yeah, right? It's, you, you remember, which is good. And uh, I've always said that. And so, in fact, uh, one of our founders j sitting here just asked, um, are there other books from Bloom founders? And I said, no, this is the first. And uh, Mansej remembers it, obviously. And yet, and somehow, you have not tweeted about that. <laughs> I was waiting for this occasion. Oh, well, thanks. If, I, if I'm launching it, then I have to like. Got it. Uh, no, so I think uh, the the, uh, the thought behind that was basically, whenever my founders are in trouble, usually my punchline is, "Will there be a book?" Yes, so, I know. And that whether you navigate the trouble or not dictates whether that's a. If you collapse, then it's probably a blog piece. Mm -hmm. If you if you get past that, then it's a chapter of a book, right? And if you look at Mansej's story, it's all these stumbling blocks of like challenges of building the startup. And every stumbling block is a chapter. And yeah. that's, how, that's how a book gets made, in my opinion. Uh, that said, I, I think Mansej was always clear from what year three, year four of the startup that this is already so much drama in these three, four years that there will be a book, Karthik, whatever happens. So whether this was going to be a success story, whether it was going to be a small acquisition, whether it was going to be a failure, I knew that he had sort of embodied so much of this journey that there would be a book someday. And congrats on the book, by the way. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, now I'm going through my second startup. And the difference between the first and second cannot be as stuck as I can see right now between chalk and cheese. Uh, the first startup, Fredsol, was extremely, extremely hard and difficult into a market where there was never a product to begin with. Uh, and we had to build that poise out. Now I'm actually pretty much, uh, I'm, 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 actually, I'm probably going to climb up to Everest, but climbing up to Everest these days is so much more easier. Uh, and with so much money that they have given us, hopefully it will become so much more easy again. So we'll see about that. No, I think um, our philosophy is generally, when the founder goes through this, this, there's a lot of learning in these journeys, which, as he said, it's not literally translatable, but the emotional struggle becomes easier. There is more ability to build quality team and inspire people. And fundamentally, your startup journey is around selling a mission and having people believe for a very long time, right? And then magically, one fine day, the money starts rolling in. You become hopefully profitable, self-sustainable. You don't need any venture capitalists in your life. But that journey takes very long. And I think second time founders, uh, I'm not saying all of them will be successful. We hope you'll be one of those who hits it out of the park. But broadly, you've imbibed so much in this journey that it becomes easier for us to trust you with another check and another, you know, another company. And that's a premium you get. So he simplified it and made it seem like I don't know my math and I'm, I'm, giving, him, I'm giving him some crazy valuation. But uh, basically, I'm almost assuming that he knows how to get past the first two sort of steps of zero to ten offers three steps because you've gone through that journey. And by the way, um, the other premium that people underestimate is everybody gets, I don't know about founders, you can claim that I'll build it to perpetuity and I'll build a hundred year company like Quotes. But from an investor perspective, I'm expected, I manage other people's money, it's not my money. Right? So I'm expected to give that money back in 10 years. So in that sense, 10 years is a long time, but in that time frame, I need you to take the company to scale that allows me to <coughs> exit the business. And so in that, uh, you know, for me, it's important that you understand what it means to exit, which, which acts, may have happened accidentally in your case, but it's a very important lesson that nobody can ever teach. You can't say, hey, founder, do you know how an M&A works? Nobody designs a company saying I'll get acquired someday, and this will be the way the acquisition works. So it builds a very different muscle on what you perceive your end state value is and like maybe it took a Bangladeshi singer to show you your value path. But basically you dis you discovered that that was the end of that journey. And there's nothing, there's no crime in that, right? I mean, there is a, there is a journey. It wasn't meant to be a billion dollar company. Maybe this one is, I'm hoping so. And then basically you, you know that that journey is coming to an end and you navigate it with all the challenges. You go to this, you go to this company, state company. By the way, I'm also balding. I'm also 50 plus. So. So you just you just trashed me on stage, but but basically, um, uh, yeah, I, not everybody has to be that state. I, I try to be cool, but basically, the the reality is the fact that you went through that journey automatically sets you up for 
you know, different, different scaled outcomes in this journey. And so, you know, we do, we do give a premium to second time founders, but as of now, if you ask me, do you know if all of them will be successful and be really large companies? I still don't know the answer. So, um, uh, and so these 12 years for us have been that. Uh, it's been learning through founders um, and, and sort of being one step removed from your journeys. And we know how difficult they are, but we can never relate to them, right? Yes, now we've grown from two people, three people at the start to 40 people, but it's still not the same as building the scale of companies that you do. And the day-to-day -day operational challenges are not so much in a financial services, investing firm, right? But I think the, the uplifting part of the journey has been that, you know, in each one of those steps, we've heard the story before. So we've been involved in it. We live through it vicariously through your lenses and, and efforts. And some of them don't succeed, and that's venture capital. That's, the, that's the part of the game anyways. Like, yeah, like yeah. When, you, when you start a startup, I mean, uh, there's a very good chance that it is going to fail. Because very unique to venture capital. Though. Correct. So a lot of people in the room will uh, you, you find this sort of borderline funny or absurd. When we were trying to raise our first fund, it was no different from Mansage's journey. We pitched 650 people and got 75 of them to say yes to give us a 100 crore fund in a market like India, which did not understand venture capital. And while you just simplified that, Try going into a rich person's office, ask for a crore of rupees, and say, and he says, what is your strategy? And I say, I invest in 50 companies, and most of them will fail. And you know, a lot of entrepreneurs think they've, they've become cool by learning this about venture capital. But imagine my job selling the fact upfront that my Excel model predicts that 50, 60% of my companies will fail. See, the case I invested in, it's a room. Chai pili is zyada hai. So I would have, I'm not kidding you, without saying it, I could read this in the eyes of at least 40% of those 600 people, right? Saying this guy doesn't, he thinks he knows investing, he says he's going to lose money on half of these guys. Mm -hmm. So while you simplified the model, it's not as trivial when people expect that to be the function of the business, mm -hmm. that 40, 50% will just die. The Americans understand it because they've been doing it for 50, 60 years. When, when we raised our first fund, which gave you the money, the, you, you, while you said what you said, 100 people rejected you. The reality 119. was... 119. Uh, 119. But it was at a point in time where India was... Didn't understand this about it. So, they're trying to, uh, trying to figure out how you will not fail them. And it's a very difficult hurdle to climb. And today what's happened is, people have lost money, but they've made enough to, let's say, offset it. Compensate and then they say, oh, this is how it works. Now I believe the model. It's okay, I'll take more risks. And you've got to keep taking more risks to bas basically fund innovation, fund crazy entrepreneurs like you, and then still get five out of 25 right mm -hmm. to become very, very large companies. Mm -hmm. And to uh, Lothpal's like, uh, point, the books have not been written because it takes 10, 15 years to build those great stories. Not everybody has the courage like Mansich to write that you know, story of not having become a unicorn mm -hmm. or a billionaire. And to everyone's point, you only read the success stories. So I would encourage more founders to write more economy class founder-like books because there's phenomenal learnings in those journeys. But to his point, I think it's misunderstood as if it was like a sort of a playbook for what you can do right or wrong. It's never that. It's just what can you relate from that journey? And, and that's why... But that I leave for the influencers to tell <laughs> their bunch of, you know, uh, you know, their oompa loompas said, okay, this is what if you do, you will get rich, you will get powerful, successful, whatever. Changing gears, Karthik, I, I want to like go back and a little bit of a story from the book. Uh, this is basically the first time you said, yes, I'll come and invest into you. Let me paint a picture for the audience. It's there in the book, chapter nine, if I'm not, eight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we had just won this Microsoft BizPark startup challenge. It was a for people who don't know what it is, don't know, don't worry about it. It's think of Miss India beauty pageant, except for the fact that the entrepreneur doesn't have to wear a bikini, everything exactly the same. So you walk on a, on a stage, you come, they ask you questions, you twirl around and you go back and then they put up a number and then that's how it goes. Uh, so we won that. Uh, we were by the runners up. Uh, and I say we won that because the first company who came shut down in two years. Uh, in fact, we're the only company who survived over the last seven years uh, in that whole, uh, you know, 10 best companies of India at that moment. Anyway, so we were invited to come to Mumbai Angels uh, for a pitch. Now, Mumbai Angels, people who don't know, it's a club of very rich people. Uh, 
meet me after a couple of drinks. There's a colorful definition, but let's let's stick to the the beautiful place. It's it's it's, it's Garima ko bandhyan rakhte hue. So I I was supposed to be one of the five entrepreneurs to go and make the pitch. It's a 30 minute pitch, and I drew the chits. I came last, and uh, the person who was officiating the whole event said, "Hey, you know what? We don't want you to." Actually, stay in the room when the other entrepreneurs are pitching. And I, I asked you. He said because you will copy their idea. I'm like, do you realize I have left my job for last two years, building this for 20 hours a day, only to be impressed by somebody's font? That does not happen. So, but you know, they were like, okay, you go outside, and there were only two chairs for the three entrepreneurs, so we could only play musical chairs. So I thought this is it. I am done being disrespected by so many people. 119 people have said no to me, so so be it. So I'm not going and doing a pitch in this Mumbai Angels. I don't have any interest of showing my innovation to a bunch of people with inheritance money. This is exactly what I thought. Uh, so I came into the Mumbai Angels pitch, and my pitch was over in seven minutes. I basically did not tell them anything that I do. There was a question asked to me that, okay, how do you do these things? I said, man, I am a big fan of Mandrake, and Mandrake as a magician would always say that magicians never tell their tricks. So that's that was my answer. And after, obviously, this dream performance, not a single investor touched me with a barge pole, except for one guy. That is Karthik Reddy. So Karthik Reddy, what is wrong with you? I think it was a it was an experimental era for me. <laughs> so, so okay. I, I think uh, I think we. Oh, were I thought I thought you said you know, I I saw some spark and passion inside all, that. All of that all of that is true, but we were over indexing on Mavericks, I guess, at that fund. <laughs> so you fit the bill. Now I, I think uh, I wouldn't say I knew it as well then. It was probably a second or third year of starting Bloom. Now we are like in our thirteenth year. So you you age and become wiser in how you pick and why you pick, on whether somebody can build a big business or not. Right? Uh, we are not back then. The fact that I was sitting in the Mumbai Angels audience as an institutional member mm. as Bloom Ventures shows you that we were willing to play the small checks. Mm. I think uh, while Mansej gives me a lot of credit, it was a measly 50 lakh of rupees. That was a lot of money, sir. Yeah, but, but the point is that was the that was the game we were in at that point. Uh, that's all we could afford, and that was a tiny fund, and that's all we gave. But that 50 lakhs inspired another 50 lakhs to come, and that was usually a model. We would take, so it was not like outsized risk. It was not like you would lose the franchise if you lost a single bet. And it was deliberate because we knew we were learning with other people's money. So you got to you got to be careful. But um, what I know better now is that I have to have as much conviction in the in the in your vision that you would actually solve something like this for global apparel companies. Mm -hmm. And you may or may not believe it, but I think the inclination to come and say yes to you is partly, of course, you, at, at that point, I didn't think Maushmi was there in the room, right? No, just, just me. Yeah, just you. So yeah, I don't know how I did this then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it was different if you had your team, but like yeah, picking you alone in that crowd was tough. But um, so I think the, uh, the two things that we index most on is, um, is the entrepreneur crazy enough to be able to pursue this goal? Hmm. And uh, what we now do a lot more work and meet you half a dozen times if you were new, as opposed to saying yes on an instinct, hmm. is, um, is basically saying, can they actually uh, sort of energize and inspire dozens of people to follow the mission? Hmm. So you're not going to be able to do it alone. Of course. And, and so can you sell that mission just not to me? on a seven minute pitch, but can you also sell this to uh, like 100 others to join this? Because it's 10 year journeys hmm. and you will require 20, 30, 40 loyalists to be on that path. Hmm. So I, that's where I'm saying I, I, we were naive, right? We didn't give that that much weightage. We didn't come and sit, sit with you in your office. At, at instinct basically said, I think this guy is true to his belief that he can build something big. Hmm. And if you can't make that bet with 50 lakhs, then what else will you bet on? It's also relative, by the way. Hmm. So as much as I might have deemed you special, it's because I might have thought you better than the five guys I met that week. Hmm. Crudely put, right? Hmm. And the, it is a relative game. If I thought somebody else was far better, my 50 lakhs might have gone there. And, and the second is like, I'm fundamentally like you were a conservationist. Like you used to take a lot of pride in saying, we save so much fabric, we save this much wastage. 
and fundamentally that was important to me and believing that that was possible with what you were doing right hmm. if that belief's not there i can't borrow your belief hmm. like so by that measure every entrepreneur comes and sells a great story hmm. they believe in it if i don't believe in it then there's no relationship right hmm. so i think when you see uh, and you should tell us because you've you've gone through multiple investors over the last 10 years do you fundamentally think somebody who doesn't believe in the problem that's being solved can be a great investor no they can't be because essentially see investing is a there's a yin and a yang to it of course right i mean uh, there's only so much available on the table for you to see and there's a whole lot that you actually can't see and you have to like trust your instinct you can call it or your pattern recognition whatever you call it it has to come from there and great investors time and again uh have shown both of these acumens uh you know to work very nicely w- one quick problem that i can see uh from my chair as an entrepreneur and uh, it's been that see in the us there are a lot of people who have actually made their businesses sold their businesses joined as a vc again then again gone back to entrepreneurship so that that's churning of multiple hats being worn by the same person for different roles or different time of the you know uh, in their entire life makes the entire ecosystem for investing and building startups so much better while in india we are just seeing that happening like just the first round of people who are like in, on on your uh, you know uh, lp list there's all good entrepreneurs of india are already there right so i am sure it will get better for sure i mean as as time goes by but i still think that uh, even today in india seed investing is uh, very very let us say there is a lot more to be done because that's a lot of uh, good catchment that has to happen which is why you guys have done so amazing and so when we starting up uh, the second time we thought we should go and pitch to bloom uh, and we wanted ki humko friends and family discount de do yaar kyunki hum to tumhare pehle the and so it went through so glad to be partnering with you again kartik that's great let me just likewise <laughs> Let me just uh, like double click on the second part of it. Like so, when so the story goes like when we got the first one crore from Karthik and you know whole bunch of uh, like like you know uh, the angels. Then of course we went to Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. In Pakistan we got tailed by ISI. Uh, in Bangladesh we were traveling in ambulances because the whole country was tearing itself apart with riots going on. Uh, and we spent three months in Bangladesh traveling in those ambulances, doing our implementations, doing our sales. Anas was stepped out for a cigarette, I guess. He was already too bored, uh, and you know, so he he ran the entire ship from there, and he would send us the photographs of uh, you know petrol bombs were being sold. Still a popular mode of things for writing even in India, uh, you know, and always probably would be not far from me, 50 kilometers. We did that. Uh, so the point is, it was very hard to build that business from there, but we went to a million dollar revenue. in like year and a half with 30% profits and then we were looking for a series a fund and it was so hard to find an investor who would still back a company those days the chant used to be okay if you are profitable why do you need money today the chant is okay if you are profitable we would like to put money behind you i seem to be always caught up in the wrong sort of history somehow anyway so karthik actually made the introduction to us to narayan murthy and uh, tell us why do you think narayan murthy should have been the right person for us no, no, I, again um, you over estimating the 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 sort of probability of that have happened you are not doing well karthik you, you do hear yourself you're coming out as somebody who you, you should tell people like oh, i I'll looked at i'll tell the stories i'll tell the stories but what i was trying to say is that it's funny that you think there's a perfect match what we do is a swayamvar right <laughs> <laughs> and, and basically you don't know who's going to say yes from the other side right so was swayamvar mein wo nikla aapka la right but otherwise who knows right and it might not have been narayan murthy but like both of us have funny stories it have been mohanlal spy also yeah, the, the audience should hear the audience should hear what what our story lines were so you know when mr murthy sold some of his infosys shares it was actually 2009 or 10 and they set up a family office so they announced it in the public catamaran investments uh, we want to support startups and right it turned out that they weren't they were more conservative than that right because they thought startups were crazy risk infosys never very rarely lost money the services company profitable almost all years so they realized startups are what i described 10 minutes ago 
half of them go kaput, they don't make money. And there is this not like necessarily what risk I thought I would take. But I think you got lucky in that phase that you got a check from them. They went very slow after that. But my first interaction is as funny as yours. And so both of us should tell these stories. Right? You first. So, yeah, because that's how you, you got connected to him. So, yes, it, has to go, it has to go, the story has to go through me. So, um, by the way, when I'm, when I pitch 600 people, it's essentially, believe it or not, I know, like how you know our neighboring countries by virtue of your business, I know most buildings in Gurgaon, Bombay, sometimes even Bangalore and Chennai, by who I've pitched in those buildings. <laughs> Because 600 is a large number, right? I'll pass this building and said, I pitched that guy on the sixth floor, right? So when you're asking for a crore, you only go to rich buildings, basically, yeah. right? India, 2010, 11, not people. So when I saw Narayan Murthy, I'm in my last quarter as a consultant at the Times of India Group, which is my last employer in life. I'm trying to use that platform to see where all I can get connected as quickly as I can to set up my fundraising efforts for Fund One. And then Mr. Murthy is a special guest. And I'm accompanying senior Mr. Jain in Delhi at, at, a, at the event. And I see he's the guest and I say, this guy just announced a lot, whole bunch of money for startups. I have to hit him up for money, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and so, but I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm terrible at like cold calling, selling. I'm not a sales guy per se, right? Really? You want us to believe that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. We will. I don't know. I, I think the, the beauty of entrepreneurship is it pushes you into like really tough corners of, of your of your persona, which you have to explore and, and divulge, right? I'm not the natural, like I wouldn't go and ask for anything. But when he says, this is your existence depends on this, then I look like a good sales guy, right? So you force yourself, the mission drives you to like these stupid actions, right? And I'll, I'll tell you why I'm saying that. So the man leaves the podium, he has to leave the room, of course. And so he starts walking up the steps of the Taj Man Singh, and I'm trying to, get like a word in so that I can get a card of his or a number of his or something so I can continue the conversation. And he's bombarded by like journalists and everyone's hitting him up. And like, it's just not me to say, sir, 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 I can just, I can't do that, right? So I'm tracking him, tracking him, tracking him. No opportunities to intervene. Then he's out of the door. I'm still behind by five yards. And then finally the back door opens and he says, I have to leave now. And I hold the door. Right. And across the door, I pitched him. <laughs> so, so I said, I said so I'm like starting to start a fund and like I need to talk to you. All I need is like, how can I reach you? And so I can't remember if he gave a card or he gave an email ID. Mm -hmm. And after that, it took one and a half or two years and four meetings with his, whatever his, uh, his uh, family office guy called Arjun mm -hmm. to finally get one of the last checks of fund one. Right. Right? It takes that long. Mm. And so our view was, if you have supported me, you would like some of my founders. Mm. And therefore, you got an introduction. Now, your story. <laughs> so my introduction to uh, so Narayan Murthy was, okay, go and meet Narayan Murthy. Because I had done something similar to Mohandas Pai. So we were in this uh, event in which Mohandas Pai was supposed to give me a, some cool CU award, something like this. You know, I, I don't know what that award was, and I don't know why I got it. But apparently, the marketing team here, Nikita, Wilson, uh, Anand, people have gone out for smoke with it already to board with me. Anyway, so, so, uh, so I, I had only like, so I, I, my name was supposed to be announced and Mohandas Pai will give me the award. He is going award to like 50, 60 people. How would he remember me? And her entrepreneur ke pehle wahi lamba wala hota hai ki ye TEDx speaker, the, mountain blogger, the, ye the, wo the, or kisi ko yaad nahi so I went back to the organization and said, you know what, change my entire pitch to just two things. That this is a company which has grown 400% with 30% net profit in just one year. That's it. Don't say anything about what they do, kya background hai, Leo hai ki Gemini hai, Shahrukh Khan, Madan Salman, nothing. Just, just say this. So that was my one line introduction and Mohan Das Pai was like, okay, what the hell do you do? And we... So he said, I, I cannot talk to you right now. I said, fine, let's have a dinner. So we had a dinner and we discussed it. And I came back and saw uh, Karthik in UB City the same evening. We had a good laugh. And he said, you should meet Narayan Murthy because he is the kind of guy who will probably get you. So he started a meeting with us in Narayan Murthy's office. So Mosby and I go to Narayan Murthy's office in JP Nagar. It's a leafy place in Bangalore. Beautiful. Uh, he, he was still, at that time, he was still 
using his 12 year old scorpio black color rickety scorpio and nayan murthy came in that uh, the catamaran folks told me that your life will change when you meet mr nayan murthy and i was like that seems like a pretty good deal let's let's have our lives changed so mosmi and i were walking down aur unke manhole pe kuch kaam chal raha tha wahan pe and kundan who's also shipped out for smoke uh, as you can see this is my team right <laughs> clearly they like like a hiring <laughs> qualification or something yeah <laughs> all of these guys are shipped up anyway so so the point is i i was looking at my phone from kundan asking me for some stuff from a factory in jinri mein in, in in china and because i was looking at the phone i was not looking at where i was walking into i walked straight into the open manhole and i fell into that uh, and all my clothes got completely soiled and torn so i have to meet nayan murthy in 5 minutes my clothes are completely torn and like they're all completely you know barbaad ho chuke hai wo kapde pehen ke aap kisi ko nahi mil sakte i cannot meet my father in law here forget about nayan murthy theek hai वो कपड़े पहन के मैं कोरम में आ गया तो मुझे भाग देते कि आप जूम कॉल से ये ये वाला कर लो ठीक है सो आई हैड नो चॉइस बट टू चेंज इन द ओनली अदर थिंग आई हैड शॉर्ट्स एंड टी शर्ट एंड आई वेंट टू मीट नारायण मूर्ति विद शॉर्ट्स एंड टी शर्ट्स एंड हिज पीपल हिज नारायण मूर्ति एसोसिएट्स आर मोर नारायण मूर्ति नारायण मूर्ति हिमसेल्फ दे लाइक ऐसे जा रहे हैं आप मैं ओनली ऑप्शन टू गो नेकेड आई डोंट थिंक दैट विल बीशियट टू मच राइट लेट्स डू इट सो यू वेंट इन एंड नारायण मूर्ति stood up and shook hands said i am narayan murthy i'm like yeah of course we we know that right and it was a good, and by the way we were told not to crack a single joke there like narayan murthy is not like jokes and we opened with jokes and it was a 30 minute of like good fun discussion he said we will invest into your business it looks like fun uh, not many people know that his first apparatus uh, software that he ever wrote was for an apparel product so he got the problem very clearly it was a brilliant match so well done karthik for you know setting us up that date i don't know who picks it for what reasons in a swayam but yeah man <laughs> so so uh, let's jump cut to the last part of the whole thing so then of course we we got the money from nayan muthi that it came in it came in very late it came in like 11 months late to a point where we had 42 days of money left in the bank so it's like you know he had agreed to pay you 20 crore in 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 investments and it's just not coming it's like go to restaurant and they say ki soup abhi aa raha hai abhi aa raha hai abhi aa raha hai and you're getting hungry and you're watching everybody eat it's exactly like that uh, and then finally you know uh, it happened and we then of course like continued scaling our business and stuff then we got an offer from courts and then we the offer was for 30 million dollars and then they downgraded to 13 million dollars so you, they must have seen the movie 13 going on 13 reverse that's what i can only think of uh, and i had to come and break this news to ashish and karthik and i was really scared ki yaar i we've already fixed a you know like number in everyone's head and now we're going to like climb back from that number significantly how is it going to take him because that's going to you know like look bad on his report card for the irrs to his lps and everything else so so karthik how how terrible was that Well, it's a disappointment. It's always, I mean, like so. Even even now, um, the biggest lesson has been that it's never done till it's done, right? And uh, in a good way too, by the way. So I'll give you two examples. So I think uh, Mansej and Moshmi and Bratish and uh, Abhishek. all of you, Abhishek, in the team, uh, because most of you are here. For a long time, we thought it would be a superstar company. <laughs> Right. So you were on top of our charts. We, we thought we'll we'll see a great outcome, and so when we firstly when you don't see that happen and you see an early exit, mm. an M and A is within the first five six years is almost never a great exit. Mm. At best, it can be a good exit. Mm. Good because you you have cash back in the bank. You when you do the math on our Excel sheet, it's decent returns. But our business is that of hits, mm. and you're looking for. for all the losses and the small mnds and they're all great efforts great entrepreneurial efforts we applaud them but they don't move the needle mm. if you take a 100 bucks up we are expected because it's such a high risk game to deliver 400 500 bucks mm. and in those 400 500 bucks if you've contributed 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 it's all versions of a rounding off error correct sadly mm. so we index and celebrate and put plaques for people who give us 50 or 100 <laughs> right not necessarily 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 mm. 
So that's the reality. Mm -hmm. So I think the uh, while I'm uh, partly joking and partly being harsh, the reality is when it got to a point where it became clear that other investors don't believe in this idea, mm -hmm. your customers are a pain, mm -hmm. uh, this might not scale into the billion dollar opportunity we thought it might be. I think mentally we are already reconciled that it, it's it not would a have, start. If, it would have if if we could have so so the the progression of our business was start with the manufacturers and then eventually go to the largest brands. That's correct. The Zara's Enough, of the world. Correct. Yeah. Zara's and and you know Gap and you know VF and everybody else. But to to make that happen, you need a substantial amount of capital, which correct. is not available at the correct. moment in India for sure. So a big learning was you can't ask founders to build phenomenally visionary companies with an absolute poverty. Yes, you can't. Yeah. So <laughs> yes, it's, it's kind of why we've also bulked up our muscle to become a much bigger fund. Hmm. That fund which we invested out into you was 20 million. My current is 290. <laughs> so there's a lot more muscle, right? Good. Yeah, it's taken 10 years, but you have to build muscle. If you really want to back visionary folks and you want to give them the ammunition, you got to look like you can provide them the muscle when they need it. We just didn't have that in the first situation. So we were humble enough to know that it right? You know, you expected something big. But the market said no, and we don't get a great outcome. Hmm. So even at 30 million, of course, we were greedy, like, oh, that will make us a lot lot more money. But at 13, it was not like earth shattering. Hmm. And and also, as crudely as all of this might sound, it is a relative thing on how the rest of the portfolio is doing. Hmm. If you were our only star and you gave me half the bloody value within a week, I would be very, very upset and disappointed. But thankfully, we had like half a dozen other winners as well. Hmm. So the, in that whole equation of what works in the Excel sheet hmm. as like big winners, small winners, non-winners, it's a gentle shift in the other two categories. Hmm. Big winners going down is far more painful. Yeah. And we realize that, you know, you're seeing reading in the papers today, unicorns are like, you know, being downgraded, some go to zero, some vanish, by the way. Yep. Companies like Quicker and Shop Clues, et cetera, have just like kind of vanished, right? Uh, the more... The terrible ones are like the ones where there's fraud and things like that. It's a different animal. But some even good ones, like, you know, they might be intent. They might have been uh, phenomenal performance. But the business model was never enough to take them to profitability. Hmm. The, th the thing about it, Zomato announcing the first ever quarterly profits was such a big news. Yeah. But if they didn't have the capital, it would have been difficult to get there. Hmm. So it's a, I think that's one example. The other side, just to inspire folks in the room, like, one of our companies from your era, same year, by the way, in Folian, raised 80 lakhs from us. Hmm. Never raised money after that. He was at one crore revenue when we gave him money. Okay. And he, nobody ever gave him money. So for fa four years, I don't know, I think Gaurav knows it, by the way. For four years in our books, for conservatism, we marked it to zero. He said, we'll never make money off this. Because hmm. it can never sell, can never go anywhere, it'll die. And then he went public on the SMB exchange three months ago, oversubscribed 250 times because he's a profitable. Two, 280 times. 280 times. 280 times, yeah. And um, the market cap doubled uh, on listing. We had sold half our stake on the, as a part of the IPO. The other half got sold in a week. And we made like, you know, 10 crores off that. Nice. So it's never done till it's done is, is important mm. in these journeys. Mm. But it is, it is frustrating for a founder. I know this played some role in your your decision to give up on the company in a good way, like find a home for it is what I meant. But because how long can that can you bear that opportunity cost? Hmm. And I think that is the peril of an economy class founder. So no, I, I, I write that in the book, by the way, very clearly that there is a caste system in the startup world among founders. Yeah, that's a good one. You should talk about. That. Yeah, and it it always uh, comes from how much money you made, right? So there are so there are Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos who have their own space vehicles. I call them space class founders. Uh, then you have folks like Mark Zuckerberg and you know uh, all these guys who have like their own private jets. So they're private jet class founders. Then comes our Indian, you know, uh, Girish Matraputam from Freshworks, uh, Zomato Gadipinder Goel. All these guys, they're business class founders. They are uh, first class, first class founders. Yes, yes, sorry, sorry, first class founders. And then there's like like there's business class and premium economy. I think of myself as uh, a founder who's in the last seat, in the middle seat, in the economy class, so the other guy is breathing on my neck. And if anybody flushes the toilet, I am jumping on my seat. Well, that's my story, right? And 
I think that uh, the story is it, it works, and you know, it, it, the reason it, it works is because it, it tells how hard it actually is. Like what we generally get to hear is people who are in the point zero 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 one percent. It's like it's 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 like having some absolutely unforeseen things happen to you to be able to get to the billion dollar unicorn club. Most of the people would actually be building in the trenches with all the hard work and effort. That's going to sound like this. I don't know if it's going to sound as dramatic as this, because the drama came from the from the industry we chose. I mean, the apparel industry is a terrible industry to go to. And when I met Narayan Murthy, to gave him the book next this time. So he looked at the book and he said, okay, so what is your, what is your uh, message that you want to give to the people with this book? And by the way, again, this time, Nayan Murthy's people had told me not to crack a joke. And he opened with this question that, what, what is your central theme of this book? I said, don't do an apparel tech startup in Asia. And the, the associate of Nayan Murthy held their breath. And Nayan Murthy took a, Minute and laughed, and then they all like, yes, sir has laughed. We should also laugh. <laughs> so the point is, the, these these stories should also come out. And to the point we always used to say, Karthik, that build something is worth a book. Now I don't know if I have done that. There's a book for sure. The building will probably come later. I, I, we've, we've talked about it. I think uh, it's a story worth a book if it did make it to a book. <laughs> so I would, as I said, encourage more of our founders to write them because, this, I mean, I, I by the way, uh, since we're talking about books and we have a shared passion for writing and sharing stories, you've written the book. I haven't yet written one. But my parting uh, mail in the Times of India uh, was basically, uh, the mail said basically I'm I'm choosing a profession where, you know, back people who will eventually write great stories and all I do is sit and be a great editor to those books. So. <laughs> That's fabulous. Uh, I'm, I'm going to like brothers try to set the bar a little higher here. Uh, this book is right now being considered by uh, two groups of uh, you know uh, producers in, 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 in Mumbai. One is uh, the group who built Pan Singh Tomar and Gangs of Asipur. They want to take it to an OTT platform for a series. So people, the 40% who have not read, congratulations, don't keep, don't read it. You might see it one day. And, you know, that's all right. And uh, there's also uh, the director of NH10 and Manorama Six Feet Under who are also considering taking it to Amazon. So we'll probably set the bar higher. And with Karthik, you can say, write a book and also make an OTT series. So that I can actually star in that. <laughs> All right, Karthik, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Before we go, why don't you do the book launch, unveiling the book. That is sure. the job for which you came. So please Happy go ahead, to. sir. And you know, Mansi has been very kind. He actually asked me uh, to do the honors, which uh, thank you for that. Uh, and I was actually celebrating whatever uh, my milestone birthday with my family. And he said, no, we'll wait till you get back and we'll find a weekend. And so here we are, August 5th. Thank you. And so my pleasure, sir. Absolutely my pleasure. And Jagannath did a great job in finding this place, of course. So here we go. Uh, I would like to bring in Alan here just for a second. Uh, so Alan, please come in, come over. Uh, so Alan is the illustrator of, of the book. He has, uh, you know, he has drawn all the lovely pictures. I thought it would be great to have Alan come and speak to us as well. So welcome, Alan. Uh, hello there, everyone. Yeah, you look. You look very nervous. Why don't you take some? <laughs> yeah. How how old are you, Alan? Uh, what? How old are you, Alan? Ah, fifteen. You should look at the audience. <laughs> fifteen, just it is a right age. Oh, you are fifteen, and yet you have somehow built an entire body of work by illustrating a book. Yeah, the classic Uh It was well. So blood, sweat, and tears, and three months of work, honestly, which was painstaking, if I might say myself. Put, put, the, put the mic near to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My bad, sorry. So blood, sweat, and tears for three months. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Because I had to continuously draw and then manage my normal life as well. Because for context, uh, this deal, uh, uh, Mansaj basically approached me with this deal uh, when I had uh, just started my 10th. So I had to worry about my boards plus this new deal. So, okay. And I actually made it uh, very, very professional. I actually created a four-pager agreement between me and Alan with dates and milestones for the number of illustrations. 
and I actually paid him for it. I did not stiff him. See, I mean, it's 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 you're supposed to respect the people who build arts. Uh, books me paisa bilkul nahi hai. If you think that if you get rich by writing a book, please write a self-help book. How to get rich and how to you know be better in life. How to find love. Those kind of books will probably make you a millionaire or something, but not this kind of books. So you you basically after your boards got over. All your friends were traveling all around the world and having fun. And what were you doing? Uh, cooped up in my own room, drawing and drawing and drawing, taking a sip of coffee, and then. that's all I got. So, so last question, Alan. Did you enjoy doing this? Honestly, in the beginning, I was just thinking to myself, maybe the worst mistake of my life. Maybe I should not have picked this up. By the end of it, when I had put in all those hours, continuously drawing, I realized that I had made something amazing. And yes, it was uh, enjoyable by the end of it. In the beginning, no, it was. Uh, it's never fun in the beginning. It's never how, fun in the how it goes. All right, look. Uh, what is your next project? Can you just tell us a bit about that? Next project. Well, as many people who have read the book might have seen my illustrations, that it is related to anime-ish stylization. So I will be working on, and I am actually working on one. Uh, I, I'm working on a comic which which might release in a few months. Great. So we'll look forward to that as well. Thank you very much, Alan, for your time. Appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the part of all talks and stuff. We are now open for questions. Any questions, anybody? No questions. No, okay. So I don't know how it works. It's my first book. I don't know. Should I supposed to read from the book, or am I supposed to like tell more stories, crack more jokes? Yeah, like like you know, anybody would like to. There is the, okay. There is this. I don't know you, Goro Sabarwal. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, you know me. Uh, no, I just wanna say, uh, uh, Mansej has been uh, a friend, and we've been uh, uh, known to each other for about maybe year, year and a half. Year now. and a half. And uh, we bumped into uh, each other at a SAS Bumi event. And uh, one thing I really love about my friend is that highly approachable super uh, uh, candid conversation, no bullshit. And that's what uh, the book also reflects. So kudos to you. And I think uh, uh, the economy class just takes us to the destination. So we don't need to uh, make too much fuss about it. So by the way, Gaurav is a, is a founder himself. Uh, and he's the first person to use uh, you know, Zapscale. The other person is here, Paras. Paras, can you just wave your hands interestingly? So Paras and Gaurav were the first two people uh, who actually put my current startups product into their uh, you know, home. So that's, that's brilliant. And thanks for both of you guys to come here. Cheers, man. Really appreciate it. All right, any, any questions? Any other questions? OK, if there are no more questions, oh, there is a question. Tell some more stories. Tell some more stories, yeah, that's always that's a good order. Yes, we'll do that. Yes, Naveen. Yeah, actually, I was very curious to know when you got the second time the money from what's called Narayan Muti money and opening that, which was quite a big amount of money at that time. Do you feel that after that, you probably, by that time, you start losing the growth opportunity in this business? or Because that was a big money, and still you gone for, like, bio... Uh, we expensive. made lots of mistakes, Naveen. One of the mistakes was to, before the money came in, we actually hired very aggressively. So that... You know, we always thought the money will come in and we will be able to like deploy the money into you know getting the results out of it. But you know, we were in a hurry to make our investors rich. Uh, and as a founder, you always carry that uh, you know cross around your you know your your shoulder for sure. Uh, so we hired very quickly uh, a lot of people, and we expanded to a bunch of other countries, ballooned up our marketing budgets, and the money was still not coming in. Uh, and because the money was not coming in, and I wrote that in the book, that we had to actually roll back the, the entire expansion, which cost a lot of time. Now, in startups, the problem is that you cannot make up for lost time. You can make up for everything else. Time is something that you cannot make up for. Uh, so unfortunately, that was a big problem, and I write that in my book as 2016, a slow motion crash that I saw in having in front of me. While we're growing at 400%, that growth dipped from 400% down to like, I think 140% or so, which was uh, like really snail space compared to the speed which we were growing. So it was a, it was a tough uh, piece and we made some mistakes, of course. Hopefully this time we will not. 
and hopefully your money's time will be safe. <laughs> so as you can see, I've got friends and family, people from who have invested into me, they've all come to see ki kya chal raha hai pe. <laughs> all right. So uh, any other questions, anybody? Yes. I'm sorry, I, you have to tell me your name because I really don't know you. Hi, I'm Ritika. Okay, hi. I would like to know your story with uh, what's Mosmi's role in your success. I am supposed to... Absolutely. So, so, uh, so Mosmi came up with the idea actually of, of Threads All. Uh, so Batish, me and Abhishek, Abhishek is not here. Uh, uh, me, Batish and Abhishek used to work together in, in a company called Impetus. We used to build products and stuff. So we were tech guys. Uh, for us, you know, knowing anything about Parel was almost impossible. And Mosmi was from NIFT. She was also a professor in NIFT. And then she was doing her consultancy all around Southeast Asia uh, while we were happy writing code. And then she identified the problem. She articulated the entire problem. She explained the impact of the problem. In fact, all of you guys would probably be aghast to know that the apparel industry is the second most polluting industry in the world. The first one, of course, is automobiles and you know gasoline, but second comes apparel. It's, the, it's an amazingly polluting industry where around 10 to 15% of the entire fabric actually goes into landfills and it goes into a water table and you know makes us all sick and whatever it is, it makes it's a major cause of pollution. So it was Mosme's, uh, you know idea to speak, right? But this is what happens. See, all my co-founders, Mosmi, Batish, and Abhishek, have a master's degree. I don't, right? But then that's what the world is. The least educated person <laughs> runs the show, right? And they get to write the book, and they get to stand here and tell about their much more accomplished colleagues. Mosmi, by the way, has three books published. This is my first one. So I'm trying to get better in my uh, job as a husband that I can just look her into her eyes and say, you know what, I am also worth some shit. All right, so that's how it goes. Uh, other than that, we've been married for 18 years, seven months, 16 days, 17 days. Uh, so Mosmi was my first girlfriend and continues to be my first girlfriend till day. Anyway, so uh, that's also part of the part of the book. There's, I mean, if, if you fall in love in Patna in 1996, very bad for you, people will come and thump your skull. It's there in the book as well, if you sometimes find some time to go read it. So Mosmi's contribution is fabulous. Uh, Bratish's contribution has always been building the text. I'm just like, just taking a few moments to, uh, to introduce our, just can you just like stand up and wave? If you don't want to stand up, okay, fine. Uh, okay, so uh, Bratish is, so Bratish is always one of the most reticent chaps and, but very, very strong in terms of building and, you know, uh, delivering tech results, which is why we connected a lot. He's a great chess player. Fabulous chess player, and uh, we we trip a lot on you know what's happening in the chess world. Uh, so anyway, so Bratish actually held the entire tech thing together, and uh, Abhishek was uh, and Abhishek is not here today. He's a, he's a very dear friend. Uh, Abhishek has joined joined Groyo, which is also an apparel tech startup. We we three of us were like we are done with apparel. That's it. We cannot take apparel anymore. It is this more apparel in our lives than we could ever have managed. So we went to uh, purely software side this time. This upscale is into purely. Uh, business of softwares. So Abhishek was mostly into the building up the whole user interfacing, making the product look beautiful because that's a very important part of the whole journey. So, and the thing is that among the four founders, Abhishek and I had like, we would wear our emotions on our sleeves and British and Mosmi were the more reserved, uh, you know, let's say, you know, more mature. I mean, I don't want to say mature, I see that I'm too mature more mature than me in that sense. Uh, so there were conflicts, of course, but we handled them quite nicely. And in, in the book, by the way, I have mentioned how we arrived at the shareholding structure amongst the four of us with mathematics and examples as well, which not many people do. I've also put exactly how our standings were uh, in the organization. So I have tried to write a book which is honest and clear about how things happened and that's the only way I know to build things. Anyway. It's a great question. Thanks a lot for your question. I really appreciate it. If you haven't bought the book, because I, you know, every, every day else I can tell them, please buy the book. Every time you see, every time you buy a book, it adds 31 rupees 20 paisa to my net worth. Right? For the first time authors, the 10% royalty is what we are after. 90% will go to, to Jagannath and for, for sure this shit should. But I really want 31 point, if I look at 40 people in this room, I hope I can make around 1200 rupees tonight. <laughs>
All right. The books are, by the way, back there. You see that? There they are. Okay, cool. Any other questions that I can answer? Ooh, okay. So I had one question for What's Mr. Kartik. What's your name? Sorry. Uh, Sushmita. Hi. So I had one. Yeah, I had one question for Mr. Kartik also. Like uh, uh, briefly, you know, like uh, how sector agnostic you are. You know, like when you select uh, new ventures uh, while screening startups, like you said, to offset losses. Do you have any go-to sectors for selecting startups? And to Mr. Ganguly, you know, we all know you travel economy class. But I seriously want to know if you would recommend a good hairdressing chain, you know, who gets the haircut right, because that's that's a <laughs> that's a serious before. and that's and of course a serious question whether uh, you are also working on your uh, next startup like a third venture. Rathu, you can answer your question for Mr. Ganguly. Would I do? <laughs> because I am Mansej. I don't identify as Mr. Ganguly, <laughs> right? My hairdresser is the nearest mall nearby, which will cut my hair. Okay, and uh, what was the last question? Oh. We are right now working on Zap Scale again. Find by he's, he's been at it for two three years, and I hope it's the last venture. <laughs> I don't want to fund one more no. month's venture. <laughs> yeah. So you better you better take this to glory. Uh, no, so that's a generic question. Each fund is different. Some funds uh, uh, in the early days there wasn't no no sector is so impressive in India that you can put all your eggs in that basket. So we are what what's called a generalist tech fund, early stage. So we do everything from autonomous robots to uh, satellites on the sexy side of things to uh, plain old e-commerce and brands on the other end of the spectrum. Um, and lending and so everything, financial services, the whole nine yards. But interestingly, um, as a side, from 2015, 16, a lot of people realize there can't be one more me too early stage tech venture fund. So about half the funds born after 2015 in early stage have decided they should be good at one or two things. So they stick to one sector and there are guys who only do deep tech. There are guys who only do agri. There are only guys who do only fintech. But we are not that. We try and do everything. Which is a curse and a blessing. It diversifies. But there's just too much stuff to look at. So, Yep. Uh, just like uh, as, as, as we went through Threadsol, and it kept on growing. We also have Bloom grow. I mean, Bloom was, I think, 10, 12 people team when we got the first check in 2012. Seven, seven eight people. Now it's it's like, I, I I mean, at one time I had like everyone from Bloom on my WhatsApp. Now I just can't. I think even Karthi does not have it. So, correct? Yeah, 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 I'm sure. So, so, so look, I mean, uh, any other questions? Anybody has any questions? Anybody has questions? No questions? That is fabulous. Good. Uh, well then, thanks a lot for everybody for coming to this lovely evening. Uh, it, it, when when Roma and uh, Chiki could not be here today, by the way, uh, Chiki is the person who actually uh, chose us. Uh, Karthik also introduced us to Chiki. So again, Karthik is the person who somehow comes in the, all the stories. Shri Krishna is our story. He doesn't see it, but he's in his hand. So so the the way it goes is like uh, uh, so when they told me that they're doing it in, in this place. I'm like, okay, I need to wear denim. Because I generally wear shorts. People who know me know that I wear shorts everywhere. And I thought if I came here in shorts, they will possibly not let me come in for sure. And that would be pretty bad, right? So here, we, here I am. This is my new denim, as you can guys see. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a new Levi Strauss denim, which has costed me more than my book probably so far. Uh, but then how it is, how it is. Uh, look, thanks a lot for all of you guys for uh, taking time this evening to come and see me. A lot of friends, a lot of family, a lot of uh, book lovers, a lot of, you know. Uh, so, you know, please go ahead and read the book. Let me just tell a couple of things that authors always want to say but never get to say it. Bahut mehnat se log ek book likhte hain. Jab ek book likhte ho, so wo ek hai PDF. Then that goes for to a publisher. Then they do a thing called line edits. They will look at the book and say, Ki, ye, ye cheez hata do. Iski nahi hai, iski nahi hai. Uh, with first time authors, you have very little bargaining power. You cannot say, I definitely want this one. Uh, you know, Juggernaut team was very nice. They were like, okay, theek hai. if you really strongly feel about this, we'll let it have. You can have it at that piece. So there's line edit, then there's a copy edit, I think, that happens, right? Where you check the entire spellings and 
everything is all and then somebody checks all the facts that are correct or not like so I, I had written a piece in which i had mentioned that uh when i was talking about investors that okay uh how important investors are and i give the example of edmund halley so edmund halley was a consummate scientist and a mathematician and he funded the entire project that is we know principia mathematica by newton right so he believed that uh, the entire thing so much that he actually put his entire uh, life savings and all his fortune to publish this book and what at one point as a fellow of royal society of physics he would take his salary in those book forms and not in you know pounds and shillings you know, you know people have been to london now they have all kinds of different kinds of like you know changes which nobody can figure out so you just give it them to them anyway so so that's that's the importance of investors and i was i was i was mentioning uh, you know that part uh, and in that i had made a mistake about the year in which the prince of mathematics came through and these guys caught it and they came back saying this is incorrect i also made a small mistake a couple of other small mistakes here and there about so by the way when i write the book the book has lots lot of in, inferences from people who i get admired i admire uh, i am i am impressed by three kind of people people who are uh, brain athletes scientists because i can never think like them people who are body athletes like people who are sports person who i can never do that's what they can do and people who are heart athletes artists so i mention a lot of those in the book as i as a whole piece because they are my inspirations of sorts uh, they checked each and everything to a point where we take down change one of the uh, so i was talking about anas and i said in that book that uh, anas just share yeah this is this is how he looks when he's not smoking by the way all right so so <laughs> so so i was writing that okay this is the guy who could be a superstar but i have to believe him or not it's like you know what uh, saurav ganguly and john rai did to virendra sehwag they thought this guy never is out of form in his head and he can dominate any bowler so i wrote that in a uh, in a double quotes and they said it cannot be double quotes because we cannot find this exact quote somewhere so we had to take it down so they done a fabulous job in terms of editing the book so now once the copyright and all these things go through then you get the final first draft version right for the for the book and then the illustrations come in uh then of course there's this there's a front page design it's a it's an activity which we ran for like 3 weeks uh with the team and the team was absolutely fabulous it was so much fun writing and talking to them uh so what do you, what what do i want as an author i would like this book to be read by people not because this book gives you any gyan because if you love a story it's a story it's a story which you will where you will relate to the characters very quickly uh these are characters who are not amazing uh, they don't have any special capabilities but they really worked hard to put something together and they are all sitting standing in the back row for me at the moment all of the guys right there they're all friends at solem thanks a lot for coming guys so please go and read the book uh, i start here if you have not read it take it from here and let's uh, let's mingle now okay thanks a lot give it up for the economy class founder and his team